Okay, I talk about the entropy change for pure substance in uh, like two segments back. Okay, in the last segment, I introduced you a couple of relationships between T and dS and other properties that I have. And now I am in a good position to look at the entropy change of salts and liquids. And the next segment will focus on the entropy change for ideal gases. So I'll be able to cover pretty much everything that we've covered in this course. Um, okay. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to write the first uh, TDS relationship and I'm going to write the lowercase one. Okay. And it's actually right here, right? So I'm writing this, 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 this down, copy paste, right? Okay. So what? So what am I supposed to do now with this? It's a solid and a liquid. One thing that we really discussed in uh, module four, second half of module four, was the specific heat concept, right? And in that one, we, we applied the first law to salts and liquids. Now I'm doing the second law, right? So basically in that one, we said that this is going to be zero. Why do I say it? Because they are typically incompressible. Specifically, solids, absolutely yes. Solids, 100%, uh, not much error. In the liquids, um, yes, okay, yes. It will be a good assumption. So do you remember when I was looking at the steam, um, a specific volume in a compressed liquid region, I was making an assumption that this is equal to the F at the same T, not P, at the same T that I have, remember? Because the problem with the A7 is the compressed liquid region pressure starts at 5 megapascal, and sometimes I operate much lower than it, not sometimes, majority of the time I operate much less than that, right? So I don't have a table, so I was making this. So think about this, this is one over density. So it means that the density is the same. It doesn't really change. It doesn't matter I'm at the compressed liquid at 80 degrees C or 60 degrees C or 40 degrees C, okay? So I'm still the same density, same specific volume. That means it's incompressible. Like you can remember, meter cube per kilogram. Incompressible means that given volume, my mass is constant. So basically, if I have a given mass, the volume doesn't change. That's what the incompressible means, okay? So we discussed this, so I'm not going to rehash this. Well, maybe I did already, but anyways. And also, we don't have a distinction between CP and CV. It was simply called a C, okay? So you may want to revisit those uh, that segment if you're a little rusty. But here's what's going on. You can see, now I got myself TDS is equal to DU. Okay, nice. Um, so wait a second. I just talked about this specific heat concept, and you know this. TDS will be equal to C times DTD, DT, right? So if I get, okay, wait a second, ds will be equal to then c times dt by t. Okay, I'm getting somewhere over here. Let's say that I go from 1 to 2, any process. I don't have to be um, specific in terms of the process that I take, okay? So the left-hand side I'll do, and I'll ask you the right-hand side. Okay, I'm done with the left-hand side. That's, what about the right-hand side? Your responsibility. Now well, it's not going to fly that easy. So c is, uh, I'll, I'll revisit this in a minute. c is a constant, okay? Um, if not, I'll explain it in a minute. So this will be then dt by t. So what is the integral of that? That's going to be ln, natural logarithm of uh, t2 minus natural logarithm of t1. And from mathematics, we have talked about this, ln t2 by t1 is, I mean, it's the same thing. It's up to you, but it's much easier to write this in calculator versus this way, okay? And obviously, I need to have a bracket over here. The c is multiplying both of them, right? Um, and also, you can look at the module four second half. In the case that the C is not constant, so I, I went with the approach called C average, so that is kind of um, correct. It's not fully uh, correct, so in, in theory, you're supposed to know how C changes as a function of time and take the integral of it, but we don't have that. So I, I have the C at some discrete values, for instance, 25 degrees C, 50 degrees C, 75 degrees C for water, as an example, okay? So that's the best I can do. So this is actually the uh, the uh, the... The formula, I mean, again, this is not very dense in terms of what I'm uh, working with over here. The next thing I want to do is I want to do a so, so, uh, you know, solve a question because I'm at the position now I will be able to combine the concepts that we have uh, discussed together. So I'll let me write the question statement. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So here's the question. Uh, uh, one kilogram, I just started with the uh, unity. Uh, brick. Uh, I used brick before, so I'm being consistent with the first law. Uh, applied to solids and uh, liquids, specific to solid, obviously. And now I give the temperature of the brick as 85 degrees C, arbitrary, I could have given another one, is placed in an insulated tank containing 5 kilograms of water. So let me draw this so we know what we're talking about over here. So I have a water tank over here. It's insulated, so I'm going to make it closed, right? There's no heat transfer in or out of the tank. 
and I have some water over here, right? And it says it is five kilograms. This is the water. And I have a brick. It turns out this is a green colored brick, not a, a copper kind of color, but that's fine. Um, and, and this particular brick is one kilogram, okay? And it says at 85 degrees C, and this five kilogram of water is at uh, 20 degrees C, okay? 20 degrees C. Find the entropy change of this water tank. So it's asking me, what is the entropy change of the water tank when the brick and the water reach the equilibrium temperature? So what will happen is this is hot. It's not going to stay like that. It's going to reach an equilibrium point, right? Let's say that the temperature is 30 degrees as an example, right? So it's asking me what happened over here. So does the temperature of the water rise? The temperature of the brick went down. So what's up with the entropy? Because remember, there, there needs to be some entropy generated if it is irreversible, because this is definitely irreversible. I cannot simply, you know, like put them like, Let's say that the common temperature is 30. I cannot separate and move unless I put some work into it uh, to 85 while I reduce the temperature of water. That's not irreversible at all. Okay? So I expect as an answer to have S gen. Anyways, so I always start with the first law. Uh, then I go to the second law. So let's start with the first law. Q net minus W net is equal to delta E of the system. In this one, I'm taking the system as the water tank because that's what the question tells me. So it's giving me a hint. Um, I talked about this previous segment. I'm not going to talk a lot, but this was the U for the uh, stationary, and this water tank isn't going anywhere. Okay. So uh, I, do I have a heat transfer uh, out from uh, this particular uh, tank? Not really. Do I have some work input to in here? Like I have some electrical work in, some propeller, some shaft, whatever. No, I don't have it. That's out too, okay? So what this means is my uh, du, or I can write delta u as well, is equal to zero. So, but this u has two components, you know that, right? So because I have uh, water, I have uh, this brick, right? So now I'm gonna write delta u, but then I will write delta u will be delta u of the water plus delta u of the brick will be equal to zero because I have two kind of like distinct, one is solid, one is liquid, right? So again, I'm now going to refer to my module five uh, topic. Do you remember that this is M water? Don't forget the mass. Okay, C water. I don't have a distinction between the CP and CV, and then you know delta T. So T two, which is the equilibrium uh, temperature, minus the initial temperature of this is two ninety three. Where did two ninety three come from? It's in Kelvin, right? You don't have to change the Kelvin because it's a delta, but I, I you know, I, I feel consistency is important. So I'm, you know, because I'm teaching here. So, okay, plus and brick times C brick times T2 minus, um, so 85. So 85 plus 273. So that is 35853, 3, 358, right? Is equal to zero, right? That's a formula. So M water, that's easy, five kilograms. C water, I look at the uh, table A3. I look at the water. So now it seems this is a little bit of a function of uh, temperature. But thankfully, let's say that at 25, this is my kind of, you see what it is? I start at 20, it's gonna go up. Let's say it's 25, it's 4.18 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin, right? But you know, the good thing is if I go to 50, let's say that the equivalent temperature is 50, then it's still 4.18, so it's pretty much uh, constant. I mentioned that too, right? They are pretty much constant. But, you know, you can see how much not constant it is. So it's a tiny little bit of a change depending on temperature, but I don't foresee the, the temperature to go to 75. It will be staying actually close to 20, you will see, okay? But if I uh, simply use this as then 4.18 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin, right? And then T2 minus 298, plus M brick is one kilogram. And again, looking at the table A3 from appendix, you're gonna get this, uh, there's two types of brick, but I'm gonna get the common brick because I wasn't given enough information which one it is. So I'll just write the common brick and mine is green. So I don't know, yeah. Um, so T2 minus three, five, eight is equal to zero. Okay. So then I, you know, there's one equation, one unknown. So go ahead and solve it is my point, okay. And I will solve it and I'll be right back. Okay, I get my T2 over here is 29, this uh, 295.4 Kelvin. Okay, cool, this is nice. 
Um, so do you see what, what happened over here? So basically, equivalently, I went uh, from 20 to 22.4 degrees. So slightly went up. It makes sense to me because this is five times of this. And the heat capacity, specific heat, is much more for the uh, you know water. That makes sense too. It's a liquid. So I get myself uh, fairly close to the water temperature. Okay? So that makes sense to me. So then what I will do is, I, uh, you know, I'm done with the first law. So I could have solved so far without uh, going through this whole exercise of module 7. I could have solved this very question in module 4. But now what I'm going to talk about, which is the entropy change, I cannot do with module 4. Now I have to talk about module uh, 7. So just like I treated this, you see it separately, the tank, I will do the same. So I'm going to look at delta S of the brick. Okay. And I'll also look at the delta S of the water and I'll add them up because my water tank is combined of the delta S of water tank. Right. So let's look at delta S brick. Um, so it is going to be, you know, it's uh, up there actually. I, I, you know, here, where is it? Right here, this underlying formula. I'm going to use this formula. Okay, not a biggie. It's actually easier than the first law. And brick, C brick, which is available to me so far. Ln T2 by T1. See, right now I mentioned that you don't have to convert to Kelvin, but right now you do. Be careful. Okay, this is for the brick. So this is one kilogram, this is 0 0.79 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Um, this is ln of a brick. So the brick, the first temperature was three something, five eight, yeah, three five eight. And the last temperature is common between them, so it's gonna be this, right? Um, okay, let me punch this in the calculator, I'll be right back. Minus 0 0.152 kilojoule per Kelvin. Let's do the same treatment for water and sum them up, okay? And water, C water, ln T2 by T1 of water, 5 kilogram, 4.18 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin, ln 295.4 divided by 293. Again, let me punch this in the calculator, I'll be right back, 0.17 kilojoule per Kelvin. Um, so delta S of the water tank will be equal to delta S water tank of the water plus the brick. I'll just send S here. So this will be, if I sum them up, I will get myself uh, 0 0.019 kilojoule per Kelvin. So I get this as a positive value. Interesting. Now this makes sense. You know, it's extremely important to analyze this, especially in the uh, entropy concept. So let me write the general uh, formula that we come up, right? This, if I'm looking at this, and that's what being asked to me, water tank, right? Um, so this was uh, from del Q by T going 1 to 2 plus S gen, right? So I have to make sure that I'm fitting over here. So what is del Q by T from the tank or into the tank? Well, well, it's a long question. Insulated. So then this, this goes away. This goes away. So then this number is the entropy generated during this process in the water tank. And this is a positive value. Great. Because we said that if the entropy generated is positive, it means it's irreversible. And I mentioned that there is significant temperature difference. So it has to be irreversible. And this makes a lot of sense to me. If I got negative value for the water tank, I did a mistake somewhere. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to stop over here. Thank you very much for watching the segment. I'll be back with entropy concept applied to ideal gases. Thanks.